Hare Krishna, thank you for joining this morning. 
Uh, we'll make a start. So if anybody else wants to join in later on, that's fine. So, right. So we're on Canter 2 at the moment on Shiva uh, Bhagavatam. And we'll do some uh, attentive japa a bit later on. And last week we were talking about the, the difficult path of the yogi. And uh, now the thing is, the, the path is so difficult. So Maharaj Prikshit asked Shukadev Goswami that why would anyone want to practice anything other than the simple and all auspicious process of bhakti? Why doesn't everyone take this path of Krishna consciousness? Because it's so sublime and it's so easy. Why do they take so difficult uh, routes? So we discussed that. Um, we pray Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kruti Vachanam Pangum Nangyate Grim Yat Kirpata Mandeshi Guru Di Dharanam Paramanat Madhavam Shi Chitanya Ishram Hari Om Tasat Dharanam Namskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sasvitim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udiriyat Nasta Presh Abhadaresh Abhadareshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhagavati Nestiki Hare Krishna so, first of all, uh, Bartha Prabhu was asking last week about uh, demigod worship. So, Sukadeva Goswami is now uh, referring to demigod worship. So, people take very, you know, indirect methods, indirect paths to Krishna consciousness. Although everything, all paths lead to Krishna, but they're not necessarily direct routes and uh, they're not necessarily the fastest routes. So Shukadeva Goswami says, because they are foolish, he replied Shukadeva Goswami, unintelligent people think that satisfying their desires for wealth, health, progeny, and so on, up to impersonal liberation will make them happy. Therefore, the Vedas recommend they worship the subordinate gods. The conditioned souls are generally put into the activities of the material world for sense gratification. Therefore, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, to regulate those who are very much addicted to different kinds of sense gratification, the worship of demigods is sometimes recommended. It's easier, it's, it's well, it's, I'm sorry, easier, it's, you get quicker results. And uh, the results, you can, whatever you ask for, you get, whereas Krishna, will be particular about what he gives you. So mentioned in uh, Slok 720, So those who intelligent has been stolen by material desires, surrender onto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. And then in 723, Bhagavad Gita it says, Men of small intelligence worship the demigods. So that's the bottom line. <clears throat> and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods. But my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. So one who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahman, Brahman Jyoti appellations should worship the master of the Vedas. Now different gods are uh, mentioned here. So what According to your desire, one who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahman Jyoti, worship the master of the Vedas, Lord Brahma or Braspati, the learned priest. So one who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors called the Prajapatis. One who desires good fortune should worship Durga Devi, the superintendent of the material world. One who desiring to be very powerful should worship fire. One who aspires only after money should worship the Vasus. One should worship the Rudra incarnation of Lord Shiva if he wants to be a great hero. One who wants a large stock of grains should worship Aditi. 
One who desires to attain the heavenly planets should worship the sons of Aditi. One who desires a worldly kingdom should worship Vishwadev. And one who wants to be popular with the general mass of population should worship the Sadhya demigod. One who desires a long span of life <clears throat> should worship the demigod known as Ashwini Kumaras, the twins. And a person desiring a strongly built body should worship the earth. One who desires stability in his post should worship the horizon and the earth combined. One who desires to be beautiful should worship the beautiful residents of the Gandhar planet. And one who desires a good wife should worship the Apsaras and the Uvashi society girls of the heavenly kingdom. And one who desires domination over others should worship Lord Brahma, the head of the universe. One who desires tangible fame should worship the personality of Godhead. And one who desires a good bank balance should worship the demigod Varun. <coughs> Excuse me. If one desires to be a greatly learned man, he should worship Lord Shiva. And if one desires a good marital relation, he should worship the chest, chest goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. So this way, Shukadeva Goswami continued to say that desiring enjoyment or liberation does not disqualify one from worshipping Krishna and attaining his eternal spiritual kingdom. So when people come to them, understand that the God's ability to award benediction depends on Krishna's sanction. So when it says God's ability means demigod's ability to award benedictions depends on Krishna's sanction. So the demigods have to ask Krishna before they can give any benedictions to anybody. They will begin to worship him to fulfill their desires, especially as it is much easier than worshipping the demigods. So once we, once you realize that uh, the benediction you get from the demigods are very temporary and can be dangerous as well. And they also have to ask the permission of Krishna anyway. So why not go direct You start worship Krishna instead? So the process of hearing about Krishna, glorifying him and remembering him are so powerful that regardless of one's initial motive, divine love will gradually awaken. So when you come to Krishna, then you will forget about uh, your fruitive uh, requirements. And one good example is Dhruv Maharaj. When he met Lord Vishnu, he didn't want um, a planet better than his father, or planet better than Brahmaji. He just wanted Vishnu. <clears throat> so it's mentioned further on that even the materialists with no faith in Krishna, when they are fortunate to hear from a pure devotee, it can awaken faith and devotion service in their heart. So how important it is to hear from a pure devotee. By continually hearing from a pure devotee, even the non-believers can realize their eternal relationship with Krishna. This can create detachment from all worldly talk and work. This happens automatically. So pure devotees are attractive because they are always in transcendental ecstasy. In their association, others can also experience their sublime joy. The first symptom of pure devotee is disinterest in mundane objects. For a pure devotee, all worldly activities, whether social, political or whatever, become unattractive. Although they are not attracted to material enjoyment, to preach, they sometimes work in this world for Krishna's pleasure, just to show others how to use everything in his service, like Prabhupada did. Ears which don't hear Krishna's praises are like snake holes and tongues which don't not only glorify the Lord are like those of frogs. So this body is, is wasted if it's not used in Krishna's service. <clears throat> so, uh, which don't uh, loudly glorify the Lord are like those of frogs, which make a great tumult and simply attract snakes to swallow them. The crown on the head of a powerful king is like a heavy weight that drowns him in the ocean of birth and death. If he does not bow to Krishna, 
So hands, even if adorned with gold, are like those of a corpse if they don't serve the Lord. The eyes of a man that don't see the deity are like those on a peacock feather. And the feet which don't walk to the holy places are like those trees, for they be cut down by the Yamduta's axis. So before genuine love for Krishna can manifest in our hearts, we must become free of sensual desires. One who has no worldly desires uses every moment in Krishna's service and is eager to constantly glorify him. A pure devotee is completely detached from material happiness. Such a great personality is without a tinge of pride, never thinking himself advanced. So, goes on. Lord Sri Krishna is a property of his pure, unconditional devotees. And as such, only the devotees can deliver Krishna to another devotee. So if you want Krishna, then we, we can't go direct. We have to go through a pure devotee. Krishna is never obtainable directly. Lord Chaitanya therefore designated himself as Gopi Bharthu Pad Kamleo Dasana Dasuna Das O the most obedient servant of the servants of the Lord who maintains the Gopis damsels at Vindavan. Pure devotee therefore never approaches the Lord directly, but tries to please the servant of the Lord's servants. So we should be servant of the servant, of the servant even. And thus the Lord becomes pleased, and only then can the devotee relish the taste of tulsi leaves took to his lotus feet. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said that the Lord is never to be found by becoming a great scholar of the Vedic literatures, but is very easily approachable through his pure devotee. In Vindavan, all the pure devotees pray for the mercy of Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Srimati Radharani is a tender-hearted feminine counterpart of the Supreme Whole, resembling the perfectional stage of the worldly feminine nature. Therefore, the mercy of Radharani is available very readily to the sincere devotees. And once she recommends such a devotee to Lord Krishna, the Lord at once accepts the devotee's admittance into his association. The conclusion is, therefore, that one should be more serious about seeking the mercy of the devotee. So Radharani is given as an example. So we should be seeking the mercy of a devotee than that of the Lord directly. And by once doing so, by the goodwill of the devotee, the, nat the natural attraction for the service of the Lord will be revived. So that, that is a tip given here. <clears throat> so what, what happens? Certainly the heart is still framed, which in spite of one chanting the holy name of the Lord <clears throat> with concentration does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes and the hair stand on end. So this is what should be happening really when we are chanting uh, unoffensively. Otherwise the, the heart is uh, seen as being steel framed. It does not melt. In the first in the first chapter of Canto 2, we talked about the first step in devotion service for God conscious by the process of hearing and chanting was stressed and the gross conception of the personal God in his universal form for the beginners was recommended as we we're discussing uh, uh, last week and week before. So by such a gross conception of God through the material manifestation of energy, one is unable to spiritualize the mind and the senses. So we're just discussing now how we start from the beginning. The people who don't have a, a personal uh, concept of God, how you know how, how we discussed how they could just concentrate on the universal form, which consists of all the materials in the universe, including clouds, trees, mountains, everything. We can consider God, uh, God's imaginary body. And one is unable to spiritualize the mind and the senses that way. Because we we imagining the the supreme to be that that body, and gradually concentrate on the mind upon Lord Vishnu. So eventually, once we are spiritualized, mind the sense of spiritualized, we automatically switch over to Lord Vishnu, who is present as the super soul in every heart and everywhere, in every atom of the material universe. The system of Panch Upasana recommended five mental attitudes for the common man is also enacted for this purpose. So there are different stages to reach up to Vishnu. Recommended five mental attitudes for the common man uh, enacted for this purpose, namely gradual development. So worship of the superior, 
that may be in the form of fire. So we, we worship power, form of fire, electricity, the sun, the mass of living beings, Lord Shiva, and at last the impersonal super soul, the partial representation of Lord Vishnu. They're all nicely described in the second chapter, but in the third chapter, further development is prescribed after one has actually reached the state of Vishnu worship or pure devotion service. So once you reach the stage of Vishnu worship, or when we start doing devotion service to the Lord, so and the mature state of Vishnu worship is suggested here in listen to the change of heart. So that's what we talk about. We were talking about last time, the change of heart. Now we are worshiping God himself before we just worshiping imaginary God. So that is the, the change in heart that takes place. It doesn't matter where you start. This is where you will, some people will start state here like we are trying to do. Others will have to start uh, with the impersonal concept. So the whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of the living being in the matter of his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord as subordinate servant. So this is the point we have to reach, which is his eternal constitution position. So with the progress of devotion service, the reaction of change in the heart is exhibited by gradual detachment from the sense of material enjoyment by a false sense of lording it over the world and increasing the attitude of rendering loving service to the Lord by Vidhi Bhakti or regulated devotion service by the limbs of the body namely eyes, ears, nose, hands and legs, eyes already explained. So in relation to the mind, which is the impetus for all the activities of the limbs of the body, it is ex expected by all means that by discharging a regulated divorce service, one must manifest the change of heart. So we use all our limbs in order to manifest the change of heart. If there is no such change, the heart must be considered steel framed, for it is not melted even when there is chanting of the holy name of the Lord. We must always remember that hearing and chanting are the basic principles of discharging devotional uh, duties. So these are the first things we, we do uh, in, in terms of devotional service. And if they are properly performed, they will follow the reactional ecstasy with signs of tears in the eyes and standing of the hairs on the body. So once we started worshiping Krishna, we are doing devotional service starting with the hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. We should get some reactions in the body. We not, and but it takes time, it takes a long time. If you're not getting, then we have to find out what are the obstacles. So these are natural consequences and are preliminary symptoms of the bath stage. So we have a long way to go for that stage, which occurs before one reaches the perpetual stage of praying love of God. So if the reaction does not take place, even after continuous hearing and chanting of the holy name of the Lord, it may be considered to be due to offenses only, which I think we were discussing last week uh, or week before. We are talking about the offenses, the 10 offenses. So if we are not getting these ec ecstatic emotions, then it's because of the of, we are still committing offenses. And one of the offenses is that we don't chant attentively. That's probably the main one uh, or most difficult to control. That is the opinion of the Sandarbha. In the beginning of chanting on the holy name of the Lord, if the devotee has not been very careful about wading the 10 kinds of offenses at the feet of the holy name, certainly the reactions of feeling of separation will not be visible by tears in the eyes and standing of the hair on end. So we think we've been chanting for a while and we, you know, we, we're doing our best, but there may still be offenses that we are committing and we have to introspect that what offenses we are doing. So in summary, the whole process can be summarized as follows. The advanced devotee who chants the holy name of the Lord in a perfectly offenseless manner and is friendly to everyone can actually relish the transcendental taste of glorifying the Lord. So he is the antidote. So chant offenselessly and you have to, everyone should be friend. No one is a dear enemy of the devotee. So if we consider ourselves devotee, then nobody is our enemy. 
and the result of such a realization is reflected in the cessation of all material desires. The neophytes, due to their being in the lower stage of divorce service, are invariably envious, so much that they invent their own ways and means of devotional regulations without following the acharyas. So we have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. As such, even if they make a show of constantly chanting the holy name of the Lord, they cannot relish the sun into taste of the holy name. Therefore, the show of tears in the eyes, trembling, perspiration, unconsciousness is condemned. They can, however, get in touch with a pure devotee of the Lord and rectify their bad habits. Otherwise, they shall continue to be stone-hearted and unfit for any treatment. A complete progressive march on the return path home back to Godhead will depend on the instructions of the revealed scriptures directed by the spiritual master. Actually, it's mentioned here that some people pretend that they're pretenders, you know, there's or tears in eyes trembling, but that that is a big offense to do something like that. So thank you so much. Uh, this is the change in the heart by pure devotional service uh, we're discussing today. So I'd like to some, have some feedback on this part of Santi Prabhu. I hope uh, that you got a bit of more information on the demigods uh, worship, uh, Prabhu. Okay, while pa Pat Prabhu is uh, getting uh, unmuting, I just want to welcome uh, Sveshi Mataji, Prem Prakash Prabhu, Rukmani Mataji, Jay Prabhu, Partha Prabhu, Parveen Mataji, and again Prem Prakash, Lord Das Prabhu. So that must be Mataji on the other chant. Be happy. Thank you so much. Have I missed anybody out? No. Okay. So Partha Prabhu, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to Partha Prabhu. Uh, Rukmani Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Jai Hare Krishna Prabhuji. A very nice class and very uh, necessary to understand all these things. I like the class and the goal of the life. We should um, we should decide our goal of life, but we have already decided to chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Yeah. So there is no need to waste our time here and there. Just use the every moment of our life uh, in um, good mode. So, so many lessons we are hearing and we have to learn something from that. But the main point is we have to just go back to Godhead. So, just we have to be very, very pious and uh, in a bhakti, there is only the way to go to back to Godhead. That's it, uh, Prabhuji. Thank you. Nice, very nice one. Yeah, abs absolutely. We shouldn't waste our time. We have this very precious life, so it's you know it's explained in Shiva Bhagavatam that don't waste it on fruity activities or worship demigods for fruitive results. The simple solution is there, use that. But to use it correctly, we have to approach a spiritual master. Thank you so much, Mataji. Uh, Jay Prabhu? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Um, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, uh, a few things like demigods and purely gods. So, um, while wishing a particular demigod, one can have considerable influence over particular matters. I mean, there's a whole list of demigods and personalities to worship to fulfill specific material desires. Um, I put Rajapati for progeny, um, Ashwini Kumars for long life, and so on. I mean, there's a few surprises. They say, you know, Lord Shiva to be worshipped, to be a great learned person. I thought it's Saraswati Mata, you know, for education, but he stays there anyway. So, but, um, one who desires nothing, um, you know, one, I, it's not as for any kind of material enjoyment comfort, should be worshipping, worshipping the supreme personality of God, Krishna. So even if one is a materialistic person, you know, yeah, if, if they go through a pure devotee, they can gain faith in Krishna. So, um, so I think 
I think pure devotee is one who has no material desires. Um, so, you know, what is pure devotional service is serving the Lord without expecting any you know, material desires to be fulfilled. And you know, nice serving that is totally done as a face Krishna. But I think you said um, one has to seek the mercy of a devotee, bef you know, before going through to Krishna. So, um, all living beings are part and parcel of Lord Krishna and are a natural and constitutional function is to serve Krishna. Um, so, I think as you said, as, you know, the whole aim of all spiritual practice is to have a change in this heart. Uh, so, what is this change in heart? It's, uh, when, when one comes to realization, you know, but the eternal constitutional relationship with Krishna. Um, uh, so when this change occurs, you know, um, when, when it's gradually, um, uh, one you know gets away, from, it gets deta uh, detachment from the desire for sense enjoyment. Uh, so I mean, I mean, if you, if you read the chapter, he says, you know, when, when one comes to this stage, you know, devotee feel bliss and all this uh, I don't know if has got that stage but um, um, yeah, so later it goes on about how, you know talks about the senses you know and I mean it you know defines I mean and you know, if you don't do it defines things you know it's a negative way like and, but, but it tells you what, you know how, how we should engage the senses like ears should be used to listen about the transcendental pastimes of the Lord I should be used to look at representations of Krishna, you know, in form and so on. Song should be used for singing, chanting, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see, Jules. Yes. Um, yeah, so, I mean, one of the biggest offenses, I think, you know, one, why one doesn't come to the real realization is because, uh, you know, the chanting um, offenses while chanting. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely right. Um, so, you know, like I said, that Krishna has made provisions for everyone, whether they, they believe in Krishna or not. Uh, the one fruity activities, you know, the Vedas are there by, provided by Krishna himself. That, uh, okay, because he has sent us into this material world to fulfill our desires. So he has provided. Uh, everything for us, all the all the provisions are there. <clears throat> but it's nice that if we can uh, even do dharma, kamoksh, if we can go through that route, through the Vedas, and enjoy the food activities, then we can at least we start moving forward towards Krishna. <clears throat> and once we move towards Krishna, we won't want moksha, we just want Krishna himself. So thank you so much, Prabhu. Pratha Prabhu, are you available? Prasprabhu is offering these, I think, to his deities. Okay, we'll come back to him. Um, okay, Parveen Mataji? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yes, uh, a very nice class. Thank you. So we understand like the highest perfection of our life is to be engaged in devotional service. We have to become like Dred Vrata, firm faith in Krishna. Yeah. And uh, all the, yeah, the shalokas we read in Bhagavad Gita, they keep coming to my head. Is it okay if I can read a few, Prabhuji? Okay, Madhuri. <laughs> Shaloka 8.16, where it's explained, Abram Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartina Arjuna Mam Upetya Tukantaya Punar Janam Navidete From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death takes place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. So, and the other, my favorite one is in the like, chapter 9 Raj Vidya Raj Guyam, Pavitram Idam Uttamam, Pratekshav Gamam Dharmyam Susukam Kurtam Vayam. So, this knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization. It's the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. There are a few more, but I'll stop here. <laughs> no, no, very good, very good. Yeah, very nicely connected. Yeah, this, you've given us the essence of today's discussion yeah. through these uh, 
shloka. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You see what Krishna is saying yeah. here. And the other one is Yanti Devrata Devan Pitran Yanti Pitrata Bhutani Yanti Bhutaja Yanti Madhyajinopi Mam. So it says again about the demigods. So people who worship demigods, they will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. And in chapter eight, other one that nicely tells us, Anya Cheta Satatam Yo Mam Samarthi Nityascha Tasya Ham Sulabha Partha Nitya Yuktasya Yogina. For one who always remembers me without deviation, I'm easy to obtain, O Sana Partha, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. So we just have to remember all these. So Krishna is again and again telling us the easy way to be engaged in devotional service and how to remember him and have firm faith. And the other thing I heard in the class was like the three things we can do. First is chant as much as we can. Secondly, and we should always ask Krishna, you know, always think what we can do for Krishna. And thirdly, we should stay happy all the time. So Ishani Mataji has nicely called, you know, the title chant and be happy. So I'm going to advise Mataji to put, put something, you know, how a word where, you know, we should be constantly looking. Because in one of the kathas I heard, somebody asked Prabhupada, oh, Prabhupada, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And Prabhupada said, what do you want to do for Krishna? And that guy, he said, I don't know the name, so you must know Prabhupada. They said he's made Mridangas um, with fiberglass, so they're like unbreakable. So, so that's what we need to think all the time. You know, what, what can we do for Krishna? Absolutely. So very nice, Mataji. Very, very good. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, so Ishani Mataji is there. I'd like to hear from Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Namam to everyone. Okay. Thank you for your uh, priceless, uh, valuable suggestion, Mataji. I'll definitely look forward for that. And um, yes, uh, a few, a uh, couple of uh, weeks earlier, Prabhuji, we, uh, we discussed about the offenses. And uh, in that, it was mentioned in the last one, the main motive, the main goal is to attain Krishna Prem, which should be the goal of our life. And in today's class, I could relate that because um, how to how to be there, basically, how to achieve that goal. So uh, it's very beautifully mentioned that we cannot reach Krishna directly. So we have to be the servant of the servant of the servant. And uh, to be that, you know, we have to, we also have to please uh, Radharani because we can't, uh, we don't have that power to reach directly to Krishna. We don't, we don't have that ability. And uh, the next point I could relate with the same thing is that to be the servant of the servant of the servant, even for that thing, we are not eligible because we have done so many offenses and we have so many uh, demonic things in our mind as the six, uh, six uh, apradhas are mentioned, the most of it, you know, uh, we can see within the devotee community and within our devotees, within, uh, because we, um, because I basically am not uh, eligible enough. I'm not chanting properly. I've done so many offenses that we have uh, that envy thing or, or such, you know, apradhas in our mind. So we can't chant properly. We can't serve the devotees properly. But in 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, um, Krishna has written that he's the intelligence of the intelligent people. He's the ability. He's the power. He's everything. He's the strength. So basically, I could relate that if we are envious of anyone, anyone any devotee, or not even devotee in generally, you know, uh, surrounding people have so many good qualities and sometimes you know we have that feeling in them that i'm not having that and uh, so uh, so we have that feeling in our mind and that causes enviousness and jealousy so that that is a, i think that is a kind of offense which uh, stops us for progressing forward helps uh, which stops us to chant properly so 
um, yes, these are the basically takeaways we should improve on this because indirectly, if we are doing this, we are we are jealous. We are jealous of the qualities of someone. Basically, we are having that feeling towards Krishna himself because he is the power, he is strength, and he is everything which a person possesses. Very nice. So that is my takeaway. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And you mentioned about uh, pleasing Radharani. I mean, one very easy way uh, to please Radharani because when we chant Hare Krishna, I heard in a class that when we chanting Hare Krishna, when when we say Hare. Krishna becomes happy because he is the name of Radha. And when we say Krishna, Radha Rani becomes happy because she loves to hear the name of Krishna. So that, that, that would be the very first and the easiest way of pleasing Radha Rani by chanting nicely. We can make uh, Radha happy and we make Krishna happy at the same time. So this is why chanting is so useful. Hare Krishna. Okay, Swishi Mataji. Hare, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Just a minute. One minute. Bhagavata is making noise. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Krishna. Very nice uh, topic today. I mean, devotional service, um, all Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, Charita, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, all based on uh, devotional service. And um, it shows that our relationship with Krishna is like a master and servant. We are, because we are separated energy of Krishna, our natural duty is to serve Krishna with our senses, five senses, our mind, our intelligence, and main thing without any expectation or motive and that is the pure devotional service. Because if you have any motive that is not pure devotional service. There are nine devotional service and uh, some great personalities achieved Krishna with only one of the devotional service. For example, Maharaj Parikshit, by hearing that Shravnam, Sukhdeva Goswami by chanting, chanting that kirtanam, kirtan is not only kirtan, kirtan means whether you sing, whether you chant or preach, it all comes come as a kirtana. And Prahlad Maharaj, Samran, that means he remembered Krishna all the time, whenever he was father, he was torturing, he remembered Krishna. Lakshmi Devi, all the time, worshipping the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu at that part Sevanam, Priti Maharaj, Archanam, deity worship, Akrura, he was praying to Krishna when he was coming from Mathura to, um, from um, yeah, Mathura to uh, Gokul. He was praying all the while how he can see Krishna and that Vandanam. Hanmanji always saving Lord Ram, Arjuna was praying to Krishna, Satyam, and uh, Bali Maharaj. He offered everything to Krishna, and that's Atmani Vedan. Lot of people worship demigod for their material benefit because it is recommended in the Vedas, Upasna Khand. People worship various, various demigods to fulfill their material desire, which Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita is temporary, is temporary like the demigods are temporary. Those who, and he says, those who worship the demigods actually worship me because I give them the power for them to give it to the devotees. But they do it in a wrong way. That is called abhidhi purvakam because they have not, they're not very intelligent. People are not very intelligent. It's like uh, if you water the root of a tree, all the branches get nourished. So by saving Krishna, all the demigods are saved. That's why we cross, we don't in, um, worship individual demigods because if you're Krishna, everybody is saved. There's a story in the Bhagavatam 
I mean, you must have, people must have read it. It's about Maharaj Ang. He was son of uh, Dhru Maharaj. And he had uh, no children. So he wanted to pay a sacrifice for a child. So, so he called all the Brahmanas to do the big sacrifice. And the, all the expert Brahmanas came and they did everything, but the demigods were not taking to come get their share of the sacrifice. So everybody was worried and the um, priest said to Anga Maharaj, we, we've done everything, all the expert Brahmanas are here, I don't know why they're not coming. So no, one of the very clever Brahmana, he said, call, call Lord Vishnu. If you, if you call Lord Vishnu, all the demigods were not gonna come with him because all the demigods, when Lord Vishnu goes, they follow him. So he called Lord Vishnu and all the demigods came and they took the share of the sacrifice and then he had son, but it was very unfortunate. He didn't have a good son. It was King Ben, that was it. And um, Krishna makes a very, very powerful statement in um, Bhagavad Gita. Says Bhaktiya Mabhi, Jananti Yavan Yachasmi Tatvata Tato Mam Tatuo Gyatva Vishte Tadantaram. One can understand me as I am, as I am Krishna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And one, one is in full conscious of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. And then he is clearly Krishna says that you should worship him and you should be, be Krishna conscious if you then you can come back to Godhead and that is our goal of our life to go to Krishna to eternal place. Also in Bhagavatam it says then Krishna is very very kind he gives you a lot of options as well he don't say only oh, do this do that he gives some so many options so it says in Bhagavatam it comes this um, sloka so many times you will come across when you read Bhagavatam Akamo sarva kamo ba mukta kamo udadi tudrin bhakti yogan yate mam pusham param. Whether anyone desire, has a desire of material things or desireless or want a liberation, in all circumstances worship me. Krishna is so kind that he gives opportunity to, the, to do the devotional service to everybody. So today's realization is instead of worshiping demigods, what must worship Krishna in all circumstances? You will got everything like for oh, this Krishna is the four kind of devotees come to me, they he give them everything. So why go to the demigod for that thing? Because even the demigod, they can't do anything, they can't give you anything unless they have a power for Krishna. So if if devotee asks them, give me the God, they go to Krishna and tell them that I have to give the thing to the my devotee, and then Krishna gives them power. So it's like a, as I said, watering the root of a tree, and then all the branches get nourishing, or if, when you eat the food, it goes in the stomach, and all our limbs get healthy. So devotional service is very important and Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and all the devotees have done um, devotional service and they reach successfully, they reach to their, their destination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. That's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Devotional service is the, is the key. Uh, it is the root. And uh, as she mentioned, you know, the different parts of the uh, different devotion service. I mean, Maharaj Ambarish, she used all his uh, body, um, his ears, his eyes, his uh, nose, everything, his legs, to, to worship the Supreme Lord. And th that, that is the way. Uh, Pr uh, Priyam Prakash Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hey, Hello, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. <laughs> so, uh, it's as uh, I mean, 
the, it's a devotional service that we we have we've been discussing it's so wonderful is that uh it said that there are 64 lengths of devotional services basically to practice devotional service out of which only five are actually uh, are, are the major ones space i mean nine are like different levels but five are major major ones and out of them uh out of them everything is contained in this kali yoga is just one main limb of the devotional service service which includes everything is the sankirtan chanting in a congregation basically the holy name of the lord that's the most important so yeah we try every day with our devotional practice saying that we would be doing better in their own but somehow we are not at that level to experience that love or probably it appears for once or twice and then we see when we then we then we are very happy about it but next day we see that it's gone so how it goes basically i was always wondering that i mean look we are all in a lockdown situation there are not a lot many people we are interacting with as we know that there's only way, i mean the, the impediment to the pure devotion service of better chanting good chanting is uh, one of the major thing is that abroad towards fashion and i was thinking that we are not meeting a lot many people nowadays and where, where we are actually committing this abroad so i realized that uh, it's it's our family members whom we interact with are also rationals and somehow or other we treat them as family members not always in conscious that they are also um, das and das basically serving lord krishna and there when we take that granting i mean when we take that then we tend to create mistakes then we create to do uprods it's something which is not easy to get away with because we've been used to in this situation for so long so so i mean to change the perspective every time every time we tend to feel something we want to control something in house basically the way it happens like we want things to happen in this way if it, even if it's a puja or even arch, archana or something has to be in this way because this is a very if someone actually misses it or probably takes some relaxation in that on that then we take uh, even if it is devotion service but we feel a bit of like discontent in our heart and then we try to sh- show that so this might not, this might affect our bhakti process as well our chanting process as well and we see it because of that if we contemplate it where we actually are doing wrong so that's something which comes up but the ultimate goal is when we chant we actually feel that we want to chant more we want to see that there's always a happiness in heart you i mean it's it's we can't see it because there's a lot of noise around it it's just like you play a song outside of bathroom and then go in the shower and then you wouldn't be able to hear that song until you are in the, under the shower because the 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 water is too loud that you can't hear that noise of uh, that song outside the bathroom so <laughs> the moment you search of the water the things are calm you will be able to hear it so there's always happiness in your heart but we are not able to taste it or relish it because there's lot many lot many noise around our heart basically which is going on which could be because of our um offenses committing to rationalism in our house that we are not realizing and many are many other things that would be going on but we need to com- contemplate on that and we need to switch that off that is very important somehow so that's my point is that just one more point i want to add it's from the previous uh, lectures is that uh, the offenses 10 offenses against holy name is not just committed at the time of chanting they are also committed every time when we are doing our activities and daily sadhanas it's not po- possible to offend the vaishnav <laughs> or uh, to uh, it's not possible to actually do a prad uh to what's holy name um the ways to do it but <laughs> literally uh, there are many aprads we can't do at the time when we are chanting so there are other aprads um like blast naming of devotees we can't do while we are chanting we really can't do it so we need to be careful all the time that we are not co- uh, committing aprad it's not just the ta- chanting thing so that's what i actually <laughs> like to present to you yeah yes very nice uh, realization right and um, i've also heard that uh, we get married it teaches us a lot of tolerance because that's that's very important uh, especially at time of death we, you know when everything is 
uh, breaking uh, breaking down. And, you know, if we we are tolerant against all or everything that disturbs us, uh, then you know, if we are practiced, then we are more, more likely to be to tolerating time of death as well. Yeah. So it it is a it, marriage is a test for us, and we should have to pass that, <laughs> and then it will become useful at the time of death. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for the realization. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so next week we'll we'll uh, talk about uh, that Lord Krishna is everything. Lord Shri Krishna is everything. And now some of these topics are quite big, so we can split them into two parts. Uh, next week we'll start with part one. Lord Shri Krishna is everything. So now we have realized that we have to worship Lord Krishna. That is pure devotion. All the devotions are not pure and they're not direct because this is the ultimate devotion. Now we, we will see how Lord Krishna is everything. So with that next week. This Sunday we have class uh, the crucial role of Grestas in spiritual society with the Gora Nitraj Prabhu from Las Vegas. So that's on Sunday. So thank you all so much for joining. Let's do a couple of rounds now attentively as possible. We'll uh, start with Sureshi Mataji. Mataji, would you like to start, please? Hare Krishna.